Oh, don't those, those two colours just look stunning together. Oh, look at them. Wow. Yeah, I'm liking them. Can't wait for this. Welcome back to the herd wave and to this week's video so as from the title we are gonna just get straight into this awesome awesome tank that i have for you this week little sneak peek at what is possibly to come you'll have to excuse me i'm not i'm not myself i haven't been myself the past few days so excuse me if my voice is a little crackly and my i'm a bit bunged up but i'm still here to do this video for you but um, yeah, I haven't been very well. But anyway, enough about me. You don't really care about that, do you? You just care about the fish, so let's just get on with the fish. So, fish. I have been revisiting a very good friend of mine, James Sinnett, who you may know from my Tanganyikan fish tour. Tanganyikan fish tour room. Tanganyikan fish room tour. That's it. We got it. We got it in the end. Jimmy has very kindly let me see some more of his beautiful tanks because he has changed a few things up in his fish room and I got first sneak peek at them so obviously I'm going to show you guys them you know um so that is what is to come very very shortly but I thought I'd give you a little bit of a teaser and show you one of his display tanks in his home that he has a lot of the times with my trophies I tend to keep them a species only tank purely for breeding purposes and because I don't want to interbreed them you have to be really careful when you mix certain species of trophies together because if they are from the same genus then they are going to you know, just breed together um the only way you can really get away with it is if you have two different species from separate genus which I'll go into um probably in a future video maybe showing you a mixed Tanganyikan trophies tank I'll either show you one of Jimmy's or I'll show you one of mine when the fish room's up and running because I do plan on mixing them. But for the time being, I thought I would show you was Jimmy's species. Now, technically, it is a species only tank. This is a Black Coriza tank. However, like little twist on it, you know, little twist, um, we do have some golden Coriza in there. Now, golden Coriza are they're man-made you're not going to find them in the lakes and basically it's of selective breeding it is something that black coriza have been bred in because the black coriza you have the black and then it's yellow and that mixes in together but as with anything as with any fish you have different color patterns different color different color variations and the say it's pretty much the same as like what you do with breeds of dogs when you you know when you doing a new line of dogs that's how they would do it they would pick something with a short leg dog would be bred with a short leg dog and that would produce more short leg dogs <sighs> just using that as an example probably a very poor example but i'm sitting here with a sausage dog so what can i say she's like get the camera out of my face sorry yeah so that's that's kind of like the idea behind it same thing was done with the coriza it was a case of the lighter coriza the ones that had the more yellowy tints to them those were bred together with more lighter variations of coriza and that is how we know it today as golden coriza so you'll notice in this tank that they i suppose looking at them you would think that they're two completely different species but they're not technically they're not um they could still breed they could still interbreed together um because they are coriza However, um, in this tank, it's not a big deal. It's not a breeding tank. It's not something that he uses to breed or anything like that. So if they were to breed together, there would still be Coriza species. So yeah, do you get what I'm trying to say? It's not like we're mixing in two of the black species in together and they're gonna produce hybrids. Something it takes away from, from those. If those two species, if those two types of trophies were to reproduce what i basically what i'm trying to say is it would still be coriza because they are coriza anyway but this is an example of how you could kind of like a, a next step if you weren't too sure on mixing species of trophies or you weren't too sure which ones you could mix together 
without either causing breeding issues or aggression issues because some trophies you do need to be very careful with. Um, trophies like Mazawa, they, in my opinion, they don't do well with other trophy species. That's kind of one of the trophies that, given my experience, I have noticed that they don't do well with other trophy species. Um, but trophies like Coriza, they, they do get along quite well with other species. In fact, I was quite tempted to put my Coriza in with these guys. Um, it's something that I've been toying about, but I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you've given me your, give me your thoughts on that. What do you think? What do you think I should do? Yeah, Coriza are pretty easy going in that sense, and species would not interbreed together. It's very, very unlikely that that will happen. So yeah, that's what I was considering. So if you are at that stage where you have always just kept one single species in a tank and you are thinking, I would like to mix them. I would like to have a little bit of a, a Tanganyikan, Tanganyikan tank of its own, a Tanganyikan display tank. Um, so you're not diving in head first, put it that way. You're just dipping your feet in, okay? Testing the water out. You can do it that way. Um, and this is an example of an absolute stunning tank which works perfectly well together um, and I'll give you a tour of it and see, and see what you think as I've said these are the Coriza they are black Coriza and they are golden Coriza so I think for the people who are wanting to have a display tank in their living rooms this is probably what you guys are gonna go for or what you're looking for so I'll show you this um, and I'll show you the cabinet underneath and how it's all filtered because it is filtered with a sump so that'll be pretty interesting for you guys to check out i know i showed you my tank which is a lot similar um that one is filtered with fx6 so this will be quite interesting to compare the two and see the different types of filtration you can actually have with these types of display tanks so check this out so this is about a thousand liters so that will work out at about 220 gallon so it is a pretty big tank it is six foot so a large volume of water pretty big tank and um, so you would have to have quite a fair size living room or space where you're going to keep this but let's face it most people in the hobby like big tanks um, which is why i like this so much it is an absolutely beautiful tank it's as soon as you look at it you think oh my oh my word um, that's what I thought straight away and the color combinations in here they're just absolutely beautiful to look at it you would think that these are two completely different species but like I said they are not they are Coriza they are they are the black Coriza which is the darker fish so the black fish with the yellow band down the middle that is the black Coriza and the lighter fish which are sort of like a yellow golden color those are the golden cry there. And we do also have some clown roaches in there. So just to point this out, clown roaches are not from Africa. Just in case anybody was confused on that front, they're not. They're from Indonesia. But they are in a Tanganyika tank. So I just thought I'd point that out to you, you know, that they're in there. So you might have actually noticed that these are different sizes which does indicate that they are different ages. So the black Coriza, those were actually in Jimmy's fish room. If you haven't seen the fish room tour that I did of Jimmy's, you, you need to see that because it is an absolutely amazing fish room. And those Coriza were actually in that middle tank, um, the one of the first ones that I show in the video, those were actually in there. And he did get the golden Coriza at a later date and decided to get this stunning display tank for his living room and put them all in together so the cabinet underneath it does have quite a lot of space it is obviously the full length of the tank and it has the four doors that open and you can see that that is where the sump lives so this is where all the filtration would be so looking at the third compartment from your left this is alpha grog so this is going to house absolutely tons and tons of bacteria in there so a lot of times people will put bags of cockle shells in their sumps just to make sure that their pH doesn't drop any lower than 7 um, as kind of a fail safe. 
and you can see in the other bag we have some ring media and also some sponge filter which again is going to house loads and loads of beneficial bacteria which you want and you need in your tank or in your sump <laughs> in your filtration system so we're going to look at pipe work now so starting from your right hand side that is your outtake and you can see that it is a PVC ball valve and this is you're actually controlling the flow so this is your control valve and then the pipe in the center which is actually your emergency so that is your emergency overflow and the one to your left that is the intake so you all go up to your weir that's where it all heads up to the tank giving you a quick look of how it goes in the sump and then you can see it goes all the way along this is your intake all the way along to the other side of where the sump is so this is in the other compartment so we'll switch around and there you can see so that is again another ball valve again pvc and this is connected to the pump so you can see right in there that's where the pump is housed now this is your K2 Biomedia that's circulating right, right round here. Now a lot of the times you will see this in pond filtrations, it's kind of geared towards larger volumes of water which is why it works really well in sumps as well. Oh now if you look to your left at the very top, these are really good, these are called ink birds and this is a really handy piece of equipment. If you have larger tanks, especially when you're going to have either a very powerful heater in there or you're going to have multiple heaters in there, it is really good to have this because it is kind of a fail safe. So if your heater fails to turn off, this will automatically kick in and it will basically stop the heater from frying your fish, <laughs> to put one of a better, better phrase. That is what that is designed for. So. It is a fail safe piece of equipment, really, really handy to have, just a little tip there. And then that is the overview of it. So these doors are so cute, they, they close really nicely and it does look so smooth. And what have we got here? Oh yes, this is a thermometer and this is set to degrees centigrade by the way. And we have a wave maker love a wave maker sort of the trophies they they replay they play in the wave makers my intent really like them too i mean just look at it it's absolutely beautiful got a hand drum he really knows how to even decorate the tanks to make them look something special i just adore this absolutely do you can see the substrate in here this is coral sand so it's very very finely crushed coral um, and then you can see that there is coral rock in here and holy rock as well so that is pretty cool all of these things that these trophies it's all natural to them we all love them beautiful you do have artificial plants in there because you know cichlids and plants if you kept cichlids before, you know the deal with cichlids and plants. They like them a lot and like to destroy them. So anyway, I'm going to stop talking now and I'm going to just let you enjoy these beautiful, beautiful fish.
guys so that is it for another video hopefully you enjoyed seeing jimmy's beautiful display tank don't forget if you are not subscribed hit that subscribe button click the notification bell lets you know every time i upload a video and with all that being said don't forget to like give it a thumbs up all that jazz and i will catch you on my next one bye now